Hi everyone, this is Amy from the Helms Academy and today we're talking about math basics and specifically the foundational concepts that you need to know if you're taking the GED or the HiSET exam for mathematics. Now this is really important because I get this question all the time. What do I really need to know for the math test? And the answer is a lot of things, but there are lots of different concepts that are, that are on the math. But today I wanna highlight some of the cornerstones, the really important pieces that make up the math test so that you can have those down and know really what to drill and practice. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you some of the additional concepts you'll need to know as well. A lot of these basic concepts are going to flood into so many other ideas. And so when you know these well, it will really set the foundation for you to do well on all parts of the test. So first and foremost, you have to know your basics on addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. If you can do those well and you know your facts well, it's going to really speed up your process in math and it's gonna make it simpler to solve, again, some of the more complicated problems. Rounding and estimating is another important skill. And in fact, we just put out a video through the Helms Academy that talks about what it means to round and estimate. Now, rounding and estimating is a great everyday life skill, so this is really something you can implement starting today. And uh, it's also really great for the test because if you are especially um, short on time or if you're really not quite sure um, what the answer might be, you can use rounding and estimating to get really close to the answer and that should help you narrow down your options and give you a better chance of getting the correct answer. Place values are also important. And in fact, we just put out a video on this as well for the Helms Academy. So you can take a look here and see all the different place values from hundred thousands to the ones and then over on the other side of the decimal from the tenths to the hundred thousandths. All of these are the different uh, places where a number could fall. And it's important to know a bit about um, the place value chart here is that on the left side, you'll see all the bigger numbers. And on the right side, you'll see all the smaller numbers. So the further left you go, the bigger the number is, and the further right you go, the smaller the number is. Positive and negative integers are also important, and I'd encourage you to study how they work together. So what happens when you uh, add, subtract, and multiply and divide positive and negative integers? And then just understanding a number line. Just looking at a number line can be really helpful for getting a mental note of how positive and negative numbers work. So I'd encourage you to use one, especially if you're just beginning to study this. Um, but even if you're more experienced, I think having this visual can be really helpful. What I like to notice here is that zero is our middle point, right? And zero is uh, our breaking point for positive and negative. So all the positive you'll see off to the right and all of the negative you'll see off to the left. And it's like a mirror. I see the one is just to the right of the zero and the negative one is just to the left and they continue one, two, three, four, five, six, like a mirror image of each other. Okay, the order of operations. Now we also have a video on this on our account. So there's lots of ways to practice some of these ideas. So the order of operations, many of you may remember as PEMDAS. PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction. And you do all of these in order when you have a problem that has a mix in it. So if you have to decide what order to solve your problem in, this is the order you should always choose. And sometimes we'll see this in very simple, straightforward ways where we'll have to solve an equation, but sometimes you'll have a word problem and then you have to create your own equation and then you'll have to implement the order of operations. So this is a really important foundational piece to know. Least common multiple and greatest common factor, or you might know them also as LCM and GCF. So I like to remember with GCF and LCM, well, I, I start here with GCF because it's the smaller numbers, right? Factors are the smaller numbers that make up a larger number. And multiples are the larger numbers that come when we multiply uh, the numbers that we're working with. So here you'll see GCF, and I gave an example to better clarify. 
So if we're doing the GCF of 6 and 15, so I need to know if I'm looking at greatest common factor, I need to know what the factors are for these numbers. And I want to get the factors down really small so they're down to their prime number forms. So 2 times 3 is 6, and both 2 and 3 are prime numbers. So that's the simplified version. And for 15, 3 and 5 makes 15, and that's, again, the simplified version. So here I see that both of them have a 3. So my greatest common factor, the factor that they have in common, is 3. Now, if I were looking for the least common multiple, now remember with multiples we're thinking about, okay, what's it times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5. And here we see, okay, 6, so 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, times 3 is 18, times 4 is 24, times 5 is 30, and times 6 is 36. So I just wrote those out quickly, and again, this is one of those places where you really need to know your math facts. So if you are feeling like you don't know your multiplication tables as well, or you're not very strong in the basics of addition and subtraction, go and practice those things. They really make a difference in the work that you'll do. Now for 15, you'll see 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. And so those are the multiples of 15. Now I went way down, but we didn't even need to go past times two, which is 30. I already see that 30 is a multiple of six and 30 is a multiple of 15. And it's the first one that they both have in common, the least common multiple. So that would be our LCM. Fractions are really important to know, and I can't stress that enough. One thing that I would tell you to focus on first is just knowing some of the most common fractions. So one-tenth, one-fourth, one-fifth, uh, no you know, one-third, no two-thirds, no three-fourths. Um, all of those are going to be ones that you will see often, and the better you know those, the easier it will be to work with fractions as a whole and you will understand more quickly uh, perhaps the, what the answer is when working with fractions. So here you can just see a chart with some different fractions and how they break down. I like this chart because it shows you that one fourth is the same as two eighths which is the same as four sixteenths which is the same as three twelfths. So all of these are just different ways of looking at equivalent fractions. So you should know equivalent fractions. You should know how to simplify a fraction. You should know about improper fractions and mixed numbers and how to change in between the two. And you should know about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of fractions. For decimals, it's also important to know the multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction of decimals. And it's important to understand the place of values that they hold. You also should know just generally how a decimal and a fraction compare. So for example, one tenth and 0.1 are going to be equivalent. So knowing some of those um, big fractions like we talked about last time, some of those you should also know in their decimal form. And I'd also encourage you to know them in their percent form. The test may also ask you about things like customary and metric systems. So if you think about, um, for example, on a Pyrex glass like you see here, you might see ounces on one side and milliliters on the other. Well, ounces are part of the customary system and milliliters are part of the metric system in the same way that inches are part of the customary system and centimeters are part of the metric system. Same thing with miles and kilometers and there are many other comparisons we could make. So with that, I would encourage you just to have a general understanding of what those systems are. The metric system, though we're not as familiar with it in the United States, it runs on a system of tens. So it is a little bit easier to remember than some of the mixed up numbers of the customary system. Now, these concepts set the foundation. So the question is, what comes after that? Now, if you have mastered the concepts that we just talked about, that's gonna put you at a big advantage for taking the test because everything else that we'll work on is going to, in some way, build off of those concepts. But there is more that you'll be asked about on the test. So here are some additional math concepts that you should know. 
ratios and proportions, percent, some concepts around geometry like perimeter, circumference, radius, and diameter, area and surface area, and volume. You should know about probability, about reading and interpreting graphs, which is really important not only for the math, but also for the social studies and science. And you also should know some algebra, which includes expressions, linear equations, slope and coordinate plane, uh, linear equations and functions with the graphing, and solving inequalities, quadratic expressions, excuse me, quadratic equations, and rational expressions. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope that you're encouraged to really work on those foundational skills so that you can master some of the bigger concepts for the GED and HiSET. These really make a difference, and they're also great employable skills. So when you have that strong math foundation, it will pour into so many other areas of your work and life. So I hope that you will check out more of our videos that have to do with these topics in more detail. You can look at our Helms Academy YouTube page, and you can also subscribe so you see whenever we put out a new video. Please check us out also on Instagram and Facebook and at helmsacademy.org.